experts we have today who have mastered in their specific segments. So we really feel honored to introduce uh, today uh, to you Mr. Anjpuri, our uh, the chairman of Anarok, who is the moderator. Mr. Rakesh Biani, Managing Director, Future Retail Limited. Ms. Pushpa Bekta, Executive Director, DLF Malls. Mr. Mukesh Kumar, CEO, Infinity Malls. Mr. Abhishek Bansal, Executive Director, Pacific Malls. Mr. D Jamshed Dabu, Director on Board Trend Hypermarket. Mr. Tushar Ved, President, Major Brands. And Mr. Sagar Daryani, CEO and Founder, Wow Momos. Just a little housekeeping uh, before we get started. A recorded version of this uh, webinar would be available on demand. So if you miss anything, do not worry. So now without taking a further talk here, I'll return the time over to Mr. Anush Puri, our moderator. Over to you, Mr. Puri. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Ashna, and uh, a very good afternoon to all the uh, viewers uh, and my dear panelists. Uh, thank you, Ashna, for putting this together. You know, fantastic. Uh, you were able to get in uh, super leaders, both on the mall developer side and on the retailer side. I'm very excited uh, to be moderating uh, this panel. Uh, there are a lot of questions uh, that are there. And, uh, you know, I'm, I'm delighted I'm not one of the panelists. Uh, I'm the one who's moderating it. So I can ask all the tough questions uh, to the to the panelists. Uh, I don't know who knows the answers though, and I don't know how to check those answers whether uh, whether they're going to be true or not. It'll be only time uh, that is going to tell. Uh, but you know, one good news that is coming out uh, from the official channels is that India seems to have suppressed, uh, or you know, we're we're looking to flatten uh, the curve over the next few weeks. We'll know um, you know how much uh, of that is going to be true. Uh, Clearly, one of the segments uh, that I've got uh, hit hard, uh, other than you know hospitality, aviation, uh, is the retail uh, segment, and you know that is what we're going to uh, really look at. We'll do some uh, future gazing. Uh, lots of people say that it is going to become a low-touch economy. Lots of people say that the consumer behavior is going to accelerate, and it's going to go more digital, more e-commerce. Um, you know, physical space uh, may have a different positioning uh, going going forward. So, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll see certainly, you know, the retail malls were amongst the first ones to have got closed. Uh, it does appear that they will be uh, a bit later to the rest of uh, the uh, industries getting opened. And even when they open, you know, perhaps uh, some of the FNB and uh, the theaters may take even longer. Um, Equally, we don't know whether it's a V-shaped recovery that's going to come in. And, you know, I heard just uh, as we were linking in uh, uh, Mr. Biani talking about China, you know, they seem to have, you know, got into the V-shape. You know, is it U-shape? Is it W-shape? Is it L-shape? Uh, you know, lots of these shapes uh, that, uh, that we're going to see, um, you know, emerging uh, over the next uh, few months. Um, I, as uh, Ashna introduced uh, every, everyone, you know, pretty impressive uh, panel, uh, you know, and many of them have experienced uh, previous downturns. Many of them, uh, you know, I've known for 20, 25 years, uh, you know, who've had, uh, who've had uh, much uh, experience and a lot of bruises on their back, uh, having gone through uh, those pains. And uh, I'm going to request uh, to draw some of the references uh, from the uh, previous downturns that we may have witnessed. Rakesh, if I can come to you first and Jamshed, then I'll come to uh, you. So Rakesh Ji, uh, three, four things, you know, one, uh, I, I didn't really catch up on China and you were saying uh, things on China. I just want to understand, you know, they were the first country that have gone into it and they're the first one who's out of it. How's the China retail sales uh, been and how's the experience in the malls been? I think, uh, yes, China, definitely the first one to uh, go into this and the first one to come out. A very different country uh, from the way we are organized. And uh, I think the way China implemented lockdown and they did control things, uh, quite impressive. And uh, I do have friends there and while they were under lockdown, I did speak to them a lot and try to understand as to how things are being managed. Things were quite very, very well managed even during the lockdown period. And now that the malls have become operational, and I think there are two sets of statistics. One, clearly, the e-commerce has extremely evolved in China. And, uh, and what one gets to hear is the fact that the e-commerce business there is 
really gone back to more or less to, to a normalcy. 70-80% of the normal business is already happening. But uh, I think it's a very different e-commerce business compared to the kind of e-commerce business that we are used to in India. And uh, and they are really in the forefront and I think far ahead of others in the world in terms of the kind of technology they land in to run e-commerce, the kind of logistics that they have. But at the store level in the malls, uh, social distancing norms are being followed, uh, hygiene standards are being in place, uh, traffic continues to be low, uh, but there are people uh, inside the stores. And I believe 30, 35 of maybe even up to 40% of the numbers have sort of started coming back. Right. And, nice. and, and uh, they should be going back to a certain amount of normalcy over a period of time. Uh, I would say that uh, while it sounds very good, uh, I think uh, now you also have an experience. So last weekend, Germany has opened up stores. And then I was talking to uh, a, co a colleague in the industry whose uh, brand is based out of Germany. I to take some inputs from him in terms of what happened over the weekend. And I also was looking at uh, certain media stories around what happened. And uh, there were a few people, but it's not anywhere close to what normalcy would be as we know. Uh, but uh, it's going to be a tough time uh, there. And I think uh, in India, we still have to wait and watch uh, in terms of how things will evolve post the lockdown. Yeah, absolutely. I, I agree with that. Is, uh, Rakhiji, we'll have to, I mean, we're a unique country. Uh, you know, we're 1.3 billion people. Um, you know, social distancing is a new concept uh, that we all are really, um, you know, understanding. And then, you know, as we go on, we will realize that, you know, whether the larger population is able to appreciate, understand and implement it uh, or not. Uh, three quick things, uh, Rakhiji, from your opening statement. One you said is about e-commerce. Um, and, you know, I hear that, you know, e-commerce may become a larger threat uh, if uh, this lockdown was to continue. Many of the people, you know, middle-aged people like me may become more habitual uh, to e-commerce and may find it difficult to get into the malls. Second is, um, you know, once the malls open up, um, you know, do you think there will be confidence enough for the consumer to come in. Exactly the example that you gave in Germany that you know, they did open up, but we've not started to see them thronging uh, on, on that side. And the third is a little bit on the supply chain uh, side that I want to understand, you know, even if we were to open the malls up, you know, how does the retailers, particularly on the fashion side, uh, work? So I'm not too uh, worried that, you know, if e-commerce opens up and people will become habitual and they'll stop coming to stores. I think that's like uh, thinking into an unknown completely. Uh, it's not happened anywhere else in the world. Uh, I think what we need to understand is the fact that, you know, uh, for majority of the things that we consume beyond the essential, there has to be a need for it. Now, uh, if you are saying the fact that, you know, people don't need to come to the malls, uh, that means there's no need for celebration also in life. It means you're still not partying, you're not socializing, you're not going out. And if all of that is still there, part and parcel of your life, the needs that you have is very limited. You're confined to your homes. Maybe you go down to your work and you come back. You're not meeting new people. Uh, it's okay. You know, you're sitting out here uh, on a video chat, and we don't know. You know, we have a we see a shirt. Maybe it's just the color actually that we see. Maybe it's not even the rest of it, right? And you know, we see all kinds of jokes happening, right? <laughs> the guy all of a sudden is coming up, and you know, he's still wearing his shorts or maybe in his boxes. It's not visible, right? <laughs> so, so the need itself will disappear. So I, I, I think that, uh, you know, uh, we should not be worried about it. Okay, uh, There will be, and I think irrespective of COVID, e-commerce was a channel that would have had its road and that would have continued to happen and it will remain there. Uh, I just hope the fact that uh, e-commerce really rediscovers itself uh, the way it should have been. It can't be a discount channel the way it has been run in this country for five years or six years now Very that it's been existing. Yes. Uh, no business model survives on only being a discount channel. And I just hope the fact that e-commerce takes this time to come out of that uh, problem that they were into and then really start doing the real trading and retail business that one expects uh, all channels to be doing. So uh, that. now when it comes to the malls and going back to shopping and, and in terms of addressing the fear of the consumers, if you ask me, I think there is nothing more better than going into malls and the kind of work uh, the retailers association, the shopping centers association and the key malls are doing in order to create a safe environment. And I think they are the brands and the, and the malls are going to work extremely hard 
uh, to ensure that not only all the rules that the government defines, but also all the precautions that are required to ensure the fact that the safest environment for shopping is created will actually happen in malls. It's not going to happen on the high streets of uh, India in the first stage. And uh, that is where I think the fact that if customers are thinking about coming back and sort of uh, rediscovering uh, life uh, the way they knew it, uh, then the answer would be to sort of go back to uh, go back into malls uh, because the malls will be the most safer places. I can talk to you about very clearly some of our retail stores are still operational and uh, we have doing sanitization the way it's required despite having less number of people. Uh, we're closing down stores early, but we're ensuring the fact that the sanitization standards are maintained and create a safe environment for consumers to uh, shop. So uh, I think malls will be the destination and they should be the first set of destinations that should be opened up for shopping. Yeah, and uh, Rakesh, I completely agree with you is, you know, you look at it a mall versus a linking road. Uh, you know, am I going to be comfortable going into a linking road or, you know, Pushpa, you know, it is Chanakyapuri mall versus Sekhan market. Uh, you know, I'm going to be like quite reluctant because I don't know who's the guy who's standing next to me in Khan Market uh, in there. Uh, so interesting. And the third one was uh, um, Rakesh ji on the supply chain. So I think uh, the supply chain is going through a massive disruption. Uh, I think we are reading there in the newspapers even today uh, that FMCG companies, uh, which yes. are being allowed to operate, uh, many of them in food processing. Are, being, are able to operate factories between 20 to 60 percent capacity and it's more to do with the entire supply chain of raw material coming in, packaging material coming in, labor being made available. So there are challenges. Uh, in the apparel space and the fashion space, the cycle, cycle has got stopped. Uh, it's been five or six weeks and nobody knew how long it is going to take and it's a long lead time category. Uh, there are a number of constituents which I mean, uh, come, have to come together to make the garments ready and it takes time. So I think there is going to be certain challenges uh, there. Uh, plus, I think unfortunately for us, uh, the period that has gone uh, has gone in lockdown, lockdown was actually a peak period. In fact, you know, I saw one statistic which talked about that in the first 21 days of lockdown, 11 days were holidays. Now, you know, 11, all holidays are the shopping days, right? So yes. uh, that means we've actually lost uh, some of the most important uh, shopping periods for summer has gone by, uh, which means the fact that there's a lot more inventory. Uh, as we go into normalcy, we will be going into monsoons before we go into August. Uh, the good news is the fact that we have a late Diwali this year. We are not having Diwali right up till the 14th or 15th of November, uh, which means there will be time. Uh, but it's going to be a process. Uh, it's going to take some time. It's too early uh, to talk to factories, etc. as to when they will be ready. Uh, but I think the fact that the fresh merchandise is required uh, for fashion business to start kick off in festive season uh, would be only happening sometime by the end of September. And in the meanwhile, I think at least for India, I would say that, you know, uh, literally the weather uh, starting from March right up till the end of October is actually is, is just a degree of hot that is differs, right? You know, otherwise, it's actually hot and right. in the rest of the country. So we're not worried about the fact that the, is the inventory really perishable? Maybe not. Uh, it will be valid. Uh, is it become an old inventory? I think anything which is which consumers have seen, then it's old, you know. The good news here is that there's no customer only. Because nobody has seen the existing inventory. So it's not old, it's going to be fresh <laughs> and new. Uh, I, ha I have seen the pictures of many stores and malls and they've all ensured the fact that they're all nicely wrapped up and they will be fresh as and when the stores open up. Uh, so the consumers need not worry about the fact that will they see fresh stocks? Definitely there's going to be fresh stock as and when the stores open up. Fantastic, fantastic, Rakesh ji. Uh, Jimshet, I, I want to come to you with a number of questions, but first, um, you know, given that you represent the Tata Group and uh, you, you've you got uh, various segment sectors that uh, you operate in and, uh, you know, the ability to really uh, appreciate and understand at a global level what's going on. You're amongst the few guys, you know, who, who had a hundred year legacy. Uh, and, you know, they say this pandemic, you know, people, those who have lived for 100 years uh, have, may have experienced it uh, earlier. Uh, the group would have been very young at that time. But, uh, you know, at least you have that uh, legacy. Just want to hear what, uh, what at a group level is the thought process? What, what is the group really thinking? How are they looking at this uh, entire thing before we get into the retail part? Knowing the group as I do, I think, of course, <laughs> the two big priorities right now for the group are clearly the people which is our, our teams and, and the community. 
In fact, we've just circulated, uh, I've just on the RAI chat circulated a video of what all we have done uh, so far and what we will continue to do. And I think for the next couple of months, this would be the main focus uh, from a group point of view. Uh, having said that, uh, I do see for groups such as ours, that the question of collaboration within group companies and uh, across businesses will uh, assume a different proportion. Mm -hmm. Because group companies are in a better position to leverage collective synergy. And uh, we are right now seeing the benefit of synergies and partnerships being leveraged across the, across the board. And going forward, group companies will, uh, companies which have, uh, you know, various companies in their portfolio, and I would count Future Group also in that. Huh? I'm not saying it's only Tata. Will certainly look at totally different ways of of leveraging uh, synergies, and that would be from a group perspective, the next step forward. And this synergy could also ex extend to customer synergies how to treat customers as a unified uh, set across companies rather than each company trying to hold on to that. And I think companies have learned uh, the lesson that if you cling on to just your own business model, then you cannot uh, see the progress that you will see if you do it in a collaborative fashion. So I think these are kind of some of the positive fallouts which will come out of this. Very nice. Very nice, Jim. I didn't think through that, is, but it is so true is that you know there's going to be a lot of collaboration within the group companies. You know. They used to be so uh, segregated walls, you know, egos that would have separated. I, I think all that is going to go away. And hopefully there is going to be for a very, very long time to come, uh, you know, collaboration to ensure that uh, you're able to leverage each other's strength. Um, my second, second point is, um, uh, Jamshed, what's the messaging uh, that, you know, at a group level they're giving to the subsidiaries? You know, what are the sort of two or three things, guys, be careful? Uh, you said employees and communities. Uh, beyond that, for the business. I think the messaging is by and large positive. I think uh, each company knows exactly what needs to be done. Mm -hmm. And it's by and large positive message messaging. Different sectors are treated differently, obviously. I mean, like we are in food retail, obviously, it's business as usual. And in other retail, uh, other companies, uh, knowing the group, uh, people are being asked to rework all the business models. As, as simple as that. I mean, it's just now let's look ahead and get on with what needs to be done. I mean, we are where we are. Yeah. Point in drum. Uh, yeah. 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 On that. And the whole idea is what's the forward looking business model? Yeah. And then, you know, nobody's fault. We are where we are. It's not that somebody's done something. I mean, it is what it is. And, and rightly said is that, you know, let's move forward and let's look at what the new business models are uh, going ahead. Jamshit, uh, one of the things that uh, we're hearing is that, you know, maybe the discretionary spend uh, of the consumer may go down. There may be a bit of a reluctance um, to go out and buy, certainly on the premium and, uh, you know, more, more luxury side. And they largely stick to essential, you know, could be job losses, could be pay cuts, could be no, no bonuses or very little bonuses. Uh, how do you fathom, you know, that if there is going to be lesser money available with the consumer? So I, it, it depends on which segment the industry you're in operates. There are some, uh, I think there is a small but clear class of individuals in India who are uh, quite immune to all this. I mean, they have the money and yes, the on paper wealth keeps fluctuating up and down, but they have enough money to spend. Mm -hmm. I think the poor are the poor. They will be spending on essentials even otherwise they're not going to indulge. But I think the large part of the middle class will certainly, uh, we will certainly see a contraction in, in, in the spend on areas which are, which are considered to be either high in ticket item or high in terms of indulgence. Having said that, like Rakesh says, that uh, uh, people also want to celebrate. Good and I, when you are down trading your consumption, uh, you may have a slightly higher chunk of money left to celebrate on the small aspects. And to my mind, I, I, I personally believe in that phenomenon that let's say if you are, if you are deferring that car loan, mm -hmm. you're feeling bad about it and you know, you are depriving yourself and your family, you might use some of that EMI money, which you would have otherwise allocated to celebrate a little bit. So I don't see uh, it coming down to like in a homogeneous society, you know, just the bare necessities and going out. 
I certainly see indulgences taking place in smaller areas, maybe with a smaller ticket size, but certainly customers will want to feel happy after all this. I don't think that uh, customers will become more austere in, in the way what they desire. And I personally feel there's an opportunity in that yeah. to, to make an exclusive item slightly more affordable at a good ticket point. And I think customers will move in on that. And then Jamshed, I am a firm believer of that is now that we've been cocooned for sort of five, six weeks. Uh, I mean, the first thing that we would want to go out is, you know, do something, you know, celebrate a little bit, uh, take the kids with us. So, so you know, I, I don't think so, you know, we're going to be huddled in our homes, um, you yeah. know, once the lockdown opens up. I think it's human only that, you know, you do want to meet up with the other guys. You do want to celebrate. Uh, yes, there is going to be more... Um, confidence building that will need to be done to, for the consumer to come into these retail spaces. But, you know, there will be an urge for the consumer to go there. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. My last one, uh, Pushpa and uh, Abhishek, tons of questions rolling for you two, uh, and all pertaining to rent and camp. I'm like, you know, what's going on? <laughs> uh, so, so, Jamshet, uh, on uh, what Rakesh ji said is about this inventory, um, and and Rakeshji's point was that look, many of the consumers may not have seen inventory and they've been wrapped properly. So you know there isn't going to be much dust uh, that would have uh, settled uh, on on that. Is uh, my understanding was that maybe this inventory would have gone out of fashion. And uh, you know how do you actually dispose it off? Do you go on the e-commerce route or you know do you do you put up a sale uh, at the store? The new inventory may take time once the uh, mall uh, opens up. Uh, that's the first one. And second, a little bit micro, when the, when the retail store opens up, you know, how, how are you going to manage the social distancing? You know, somebody uh, told me that the trial rooms may become very difficult. Uh, you know, how do we allow a customer to try clothes uh, and then just leave it there? Um, you know, what, what if the customer did have the virus um, and somebody else was trying the same, same clothes? You know, how do, how, how do you fathom those challenges? Yeah, so coming to the first one, I tend to agree with Rakesh. Uh, fashion is as much producer driven as it is consumer needs driven. See, if you were to ask a customer, what do you think next year's fashion would be? They won't have a clue. So no, whether it's right. this year's yes. fashion, next year's yeah. fashion slightly delayed. I understand functionality because of season. So that we are fortunate with and what Rakesh has said is absolutely right. But the only thing is that players in the industry, some of them should not be foolish enough to pull the trigger. See, and that's where the problem will come. I don't think the problem will come from the consumer side. They also understand and everybody understands now. You know, customers also understand that retailers have been shut. So they will open and they're not going to give a discount merely because they were shut. But if a couple of players pull the trigger, that is where I think the problem will come. Not Very good point. From the consumer's point of view. You know, someone will be foolish enough to open and say 50% off. And then everyone will have to say, oh my God. But I think if the players just hold their resolve, and right now, of course, everybody's working together to get concessions for the industry and collaboration. And if that collaboration, this is not cartelization. This is just being sensible about the fact that uh, consumers will respond. So I think that should be the case. The tri trial room one is a tricky one. And I think there are two ways in which uh, companies will have to, have to do it. Either you have a process of individual sanitization, which is quite laborious, or you use technology or you have a very easy return policy. And return means if you buy above a certain amount and then you go home and you don't like it, uh, we will send the free delivery sample to you back. I mean, in the sense that we, like you do for home delivery in any case. Right? Yes, yes, yes. So in fact, I feel that companies will morph the online and offline service into some other level of service is my personal view. So it's a 360 degree. So I may want to come just look at the item and tell you, I'm not sure. Can you send me these two sizes to my residence? I will try out both. I will give one to the guy. I'm making the payment is that I'm going out. Yes, I must be able to give that option. On the other hand, someone might turn around and say, no, I want to, uh, I want some technology to tell me that, look, this is going to be a reasonable fit. In which case I, I do it. Or third, I just want to come to your place. So you make sure that it is well sanitized every time you use it. But that's the tough one. Apparel is the toughest, mm -hmm. because it's the highest touch product uh, in the game. I mean, you don't have to keep touching refrigerators, but you have to keep, you know, apparel. But I, I suppose the companies which 
get more innovative and give more of a 360 degree option to customers will will benefit even if it's at a slightly higher price yeah yeah and and then rakesh ji there are international retailers isn't it uh, through technology you can try different colors different sizes uh so i i think uh, you know uh, we sort of uh, making a lot of assumptions here in terms of what spreads the virus and what does not and you know there are uh, is clothes a product that the virus sort of survives on etc we don't know none of us are experts and but i'm sure that you know as part of the consultation paper that retailers association is putting together working together with the mall people you know, mall developers also on that front we will ensure that the right precautions right. take place whereas uh, i think i completely agree with jamshed that it is imperative that one needs to control the crowds which come into the stores uh, yes. during this period and events like sale etc are are completely against the principle of controlling crowds and i would only request that not the industry should be cautious uh, in the initial period uh, rather than taking steps uh, which could sort of make things even worse uh, and the mall should also sort of work with the brands uh, to put certain guidelines in place controlling crowd which also means that uh, you know events like these should not be held in till the time we we have confidence that as a country we've been able to overcome the crisis and the fear among consumers has gone down perfect uh, so pushpa i'm going to come to you and abhishek you know i i just want the cat out of the bag there you know these questions will stop otherwise they're just continuing to pour uh, on you know what's the thought process from the mall developers on rental during the lockdown period and post the lockdown period and the second one is do you think that the cam charge will increase because there will need to be more um, you know safety security uh, within the uh, whilst uh, the customers are entering the mall pushpa you want to go first uh, sorry pushpa uh, can you unmute so sorry pushpa uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Can you hear me? Yes. Yes. Uh, yes. So, uh, uh, you know, I think it's very important for us to understand that this is not a situation wherein it's a can I put in a strong word of David versus Goliath. There is no. It's a situation that has ha happened. It's a situation that has got all. It, it's yeah. a situation. Pushpa, can you turn the off the? Hi, Pushpa. Can you turn off the video? Uh, your voice is cracking, so it'll be. Uh, oh, okay. Uh, perfect. Can you Go hear ahead. me? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Perfect. Now, very yeah. nice. Thank so, you. I think it is uh, as overwhelming for the developer as it is for the retailers, right? Now, we've been talking, and uh, one thing that I can tell you is that uh, yes, we understand that it is a time. to collaborate it's a time more than ever to collaborate to get the customer sentiment back hmm. if you look at what is the larger picture and i'm constantly looking at what's happening in china and in china what's happened is that actually uh, the people in china are uh, the capital land have just announced their march result the quarter result and you will be amazed to know that from february to march they have seen a growth of 105% in footfall and 186% in sales wow fantastic yes. fantastic yes month on month so what it meant is that and capital land you know has got sizable amounts yes. of sales in china and yep. they are on a reet so one thing that showed very clearly is that consumers in spite of social distancing are coming back to malls in order to purchase on a mission like mode now they are not purchasing staying for a long time so what does that do for a mall developer the mall developer has to come up with ways and means where we ensure that social distancing is adhered to without a fail even within the mall, you know stores we are coming up with norms so that there are only x number of people who are um, are you able to hear me or yes I yes yes no no absolutely please okay. you are very clear so who are able to go off uh, you know let's say the, the consumers are coming in and there is a sale then we will have to really collaborate closely with the retailers in order to ensure that only x number of people enter that store at any given particular point in time so we are going to the extent of creating norms 
that if it's a 200,000 square feet mall or a 500,000 square feet mall, how many people can be there in that premises keeping social distancing in mind? So we're coming up with those norms and that will be a norm that we will actually work closely and adhere to and then also collaborate with the retailers. Once we have those norms in place and once consumers' confidence start coming into play, and this won't come into play only through social distancing, it will also come into play through contactless service, contactless uh, method of uh, uh, even looking at their own uh, different kinds of outfits. So we will be looking at investing in uh, magic mirrors where a consumer can see a dress and know how she will look in different kinds of uh, you know, colors of the same dress. So we will have to use technology in order to improve the consumer's experience and ensure that it is as contactless as possible. But to say that consumers won't come back, I don't think it's true because I firmly, we were all talking about it, that consumers will be ginger about coming back. At the end of the day, we are social human beings. As long as lifestyle or communities are slowly coming back to action, our, uh, our confidence and belief is that maybe over the next three to four months or five months, if the COVID situation is flattened, then the consumer confidence is a good reason to come back. Of course, the COVID situation has to get flattened and that is the given. If there's another spike, obviously there will be a problem. Now coming back to your original question of what you, we should do, we believe that this is a time where we should be in connect with our retailers even more. We need to work, collaborate, get both our businesses back on track in a seamless fashion, in a safe fashion. So our collaboration will be on that first, the rent and a CAM net result of it. Now coming back to CAM, very principal understanding is to reduce costs. I think even the retailers would be reducing costs, even we are reducing costs, and our very endeavor, and I'm sure this is for all developers, Whatever cost reduced, we'll transparently uh, you know, give it right back to the retailers because of the collaboration approach. Endeavor clearly is to reduce, ensure that there is a way that the pain is shared, and then build the uh, business as quickly as possible in as safe manner as possible, and hope that by October, things are a little bit more on stream. That would be broadly the way. Wonderful, wonderful, Pushpa. Uh, Abhishek, uh, a question to you from Pushpa's uh, comments. Uh, you know, again on the on the rental side, and you know, maybe we'll move on after this. Um, so the question is really two parts to that, uh, and you know, the second one is in my mind as well. The first one is if Pushpa is saying is that you know China sales have come back, uh, why would the mall developers not agree at a revenue share uh, if the China sales have come back so rapidly? And the second is, uh, Abhishek, uh, really on the, uh, what's the compulsion of the developer to continue to charge the rent? Um, and, you know, I, I just want you to explain a little bit of lease rental discounting so that, uh, you know, otherwise it's just appearing to be like, you know, why are you guys not, you know, not giving sure, us this sure, rent sure. free? Yeah. So, uh, like you said, the lease rental discounting or any other form of term loans that the developer has taken is usually taken uh, by uh, giving away the lease rentals that the developer gets every month to the bank, the bank securitizes that and then you raise the money. And that's how further whatever you invest in the future malls and that's how the malls are built. Now, whatever the rents that I'm getting are already escrowed with the bank. And if I don't get those rentals, then basically uh, my account becomes a non-performing asset for the bank. Now, for, for the three months that RBI has given us that moratorium, and I repeat moratorium and it's not a waiver yes. where we are allowed to not pay the EMIs for the first three months. But then even the bankers are unclear about how they are going to charge the EMI that they have not taken. For example, some of the banks are saying that on in the fourth month, you please pay all the rest of the three months. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh my God. So, so the bankers are not really clear right now. 100% clarity. They don't, they still don't have. Some bankers are saying we'll split it over 12 months. Some bankers are saying, We'll split it over the next three months. So that in principle clarity is still not there. And that, that three month money becomes a big amount. Yes. Yeah. So, so that's one part and connected to that. I wanted to say is that, 
you know, this business, this whole retail shopping center business, it's not just the two of us, you know, retailer developer. There are four partners to this. Of course, consumers, the one we are serving, but besides that, there are four partners. There's the government. Yes. There's the bank, there's developer and there's the retailer. Now what is happening is the whole problem right now seems like needs to be resolved only by two partners, which kind of seems a bit of an unfair kind of a thing right now. But I mean, the situation is what it is. We should all get together and try and find out a solution that all four partners help each other instead of just two partners trying to figure out what to do, uh, which is, which is kind of the most important because without that, you know, it, it, we won't be able to sail through without that. So, so that was one. This other thing that I want to stress on is let us not look at this lockdown period or these three or four months period as the period that we need to kind of figure out what to do. We should look at all of this as a 12 month period or a 24 month period, wherein we come together and say that, you know, we've got this situation, we've got this problem. lockdown we are looking at low sales or two months we are looking at low sales. Let's spread this out, look at it as a 12 month problem or a 24 month problem and see how we can figure out a way that neither you lose, neither I lose. We, we start building up sales, we start making money, we balance it out. Because if we just look at it as a two month problem, we will not find a solution. Yes, because I, I have to that. pay my bank, you can't pay me because you got, you know, there's no sale. So if I just tell you or you tell me that you can't pay me and if I tell you you have to pay me, it won't, ha- it, it won't work. So the problem has to be put into a 12 month bucket or an 18 month bucket for us to find a solution. And the moment we look at the problem like that, I think we will reach to some kind of solution. Yeah. Um, Lots of compliments, huh? Very well said. Uh, Everybody is saying is that, uh, you know, it it is. And, you know, maybe that is what it is, uh, Pushpa. There is no easy, straightforward solution. Absolutely. It is what between you and Abhishek you've articulated. I think that is what the solution is going to be. In fact, you know, we constantly speak that there are three uh, phases to this. One is the restart phase. Restart is the basic consumer confidence building phase. Then there is another revive phase where the consumer starts behaving almost normally. And then of course, there is a new phase that we can look at, which is the resurrect phase. What will happen in all, you know, generally the, that's the talk going on that uh, this is also a time when consumers will start looking at brands very differently. Certain brands will find much more uh, salience with the consumers. Those brands which have got high on social capital, those brands which are high on sustainability, those brands which are high in terms of empathy, those brands will get much more positive, uh, you know, sort of uh, impact with the consumers. And hence, those will flourish in, not in the restart phase, but at least in the revive phase. And few other brands may actually find the going tough. That actually, it's a time for everyone to relook at their business. And uh, constantly, what we are talking is that this tough time is a time that will not define us. It will actually refine us. <laughs> we refine the business. We have a great thing going in for future. I think Super. another thing to add here is that there will not be a tailor cut situation for all kind of retail formats. A cinema will demand a separate solution. A restaurant will demand a separate solution. A hypermarket will demand a separate solution. Uh, fashion will demand a separate solution. So I think we'll have to all learn uh, through this process and see what works for which uh, which uh, category. Yeah, yeah. Actually, that's also very true. Uh, multiplex yes. will be different. Restaurant will be different. Yes. Food court will be different. You're absolutely, absolutely. right. As Jamshed said is that, uh, you know, our uh, hypermarkets are continuing to serve today. They're open. They're, you know, uh-huh. there is business that's happening. Tushar, several questions. Uh, but first, tell me is, how is GCC doing? So... In GCC, Bahrain opened up uh, for two weeks and they shut down again. So they had a mm-hmm. trial phase. What we saw in GCC, Dubai is closed. Dubai is looking to open because of Ramadan and Eid. So they are saying we might open Ramadan and Eid four hours or six hours, the mall will open. When I will give you from the retailer's point of view and what GCC has done. Yes. Has done a three-month rent-free to, to everybody in the market. Dubai... Uh, Mohammed Al Abar, who is the chairman of Imar Group, Imar. yes, that he is going to willing to help the retailers, and it has to be a collaborative approach. 
where both will help each other and we all are looking at a minimum 12 to 18 month period for it to normalize in gcc when the stores opened everybody is wearing a mask there's a social distancing the conversion has gone up because only serious players are coming in the store very true but the sale in the first week was 20 to 25% and it went up to 35% of like for like of last year the trial rooms were shut so there was no trial happening customers were picking up more apparel than footwear customers were picking up more sleepwear and more products to wear at home sandals slippers because they know the lockdown is going to continue and also it's ramadan so they will be more at home we are seeing a change in the customer habit where the even the malls and the government is restricting the number of staff working in the store we have limited time 12 to 8 a limited number of staff in the store and limited number of customers are allowed in the store at one time customer is not asking for help so if you go close and say can i help you say no please stay away from me oh my god more credit card transactions we don't have paytm or upi is there but i will see that will change in india you will have more upi paytm phone pay because they don't want to give you the credit cards so cash is not coming in only credit cards were coming in contactless uh, things uh, happening so it is and our experience in gcc and also gcc also a lot of indian customers who also buying and we have yeah. a lot of brands which are similar like yeah. aldo with aldo with you yeah and and to share any any knowledge on the multiplexes did they open the multiplexes and the food courts and the restaurants in gcc the restaurants are only open for delivery they had opened up the the restaurants were open up before the lockdown where they had 50% customers we also run restaurants there and we had to keep one table empty and we had to keep a social distancing between them got it but deliveries are happening e-commerce is on we do e-commerce there e-commerce is working very good uh, customers are very happy with the e-commerce that something is being delivered but uh, we also do Uh, department stores that we saw we are run out of toasters people want bread making machines at home <laughs> so bread making machines we are seeing pajamas we are seeing footwear that people wear at, wear at home is a different category nobody is buying any formal clothes no formal suits no formal clothes because they are not going to office home decorative items i need a table i need a chair at my house because everybody wants to create a home office and sitting at home for a month you are realizing what are the flaws and you want to fix that so i think that will be a new category where the customer will say you know i was at the home and this is not working i think this doesn't look good he might he or she might spend on that interesting and on the uh, consumption pattern uh, you are saying is it's about 35% we've come back to uh, but the conversion is very high of any customer who's getting into the mall because you know it will be only largely serious uh guys and there is and the expectation you know abhishek mentioned that uh, tushar was sort of 18 months for things to get normal really just back to where it was before covid uh, what's the thought uh, of major brands so in india you know being very 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 optimistic if diwali and the marriage season october november goes decent when i say decent 60% of last year or 70% the market will pick up in jan feb if the october doesn't go well then i think it's 2021 after april 2021 uh, we with our experience and with our uh, you know what we have heard and listen to people are talking about a w curve saying this can come the virus can come back again in september and people are preparing for that so they trust you know w curve uh, we are looking at uh, at least two years as as a company we have made a crisis management and a continuity plan saying this could be 18 months to 24 months let's prepare for it. and when we say prepare uh, what pushpa pointed out cost for our travel costs are going to be zero for the next 3 4 months our buys are going to happen on zoom now so there'll be no traveling for the buy to new york or to singapore or any other country so that will help reduce cost and i think the malls will also have to look at the same thing to reduce so everybody can benefit from and um, and and to share uh, there's a question uh, that is being asked is do you think that it will be more economical product that you'll need to keep at the stores uh, given the propensity 
uh, to buy may have gone down? I I think there will be more sales happening. I, I don't I won't say economical product. But in the beginning, it won't happen because if you have only 35% customers coming in and you're limiting the number of customers coming in the mall, doing a sale doesn't make sense. I think over the period, people will start going on sale and this will not be something that the industry will ever agree on. I've been on a lot of chats and people say, yes, I won't do it. Everybody has to see their own cash flow. Everybody has to manage their own business, manage their own season and they know it better. In the beginning, it won't happen. I think it will ha happen later, when you mm. when you mm. it's not coming in, becoming normal. Fifty customers can come in the store. That's the time that you might say, "Let me get the cash," because right now, cash is king, and cash is the only thing that everybody, all of us here, should be worried about, and liquidity, and and getting through this crisis together. I completely agree with you. And, you know, Tushar, this is all across. Everybody is saying at this moment in time, it is going to be about cash. So whatever the brand, the company, the corporate will need to do to conserve the cash, whether it's bringing down the expense or doing, you know, another mechanisms to be able to get in the revenue. I think that is what the mantra is going to be. I, I, I mean, it's really been a productivity loss, not a wealth destruction. Uh, I think is and that if you are able to take it through uh, over the next nine, 12 months or however long it may be, um, then, you know, hopefully on the other side, it should not be a big, big, big problem. Sagar, I'm, uh, if I can come to you, um, five, six things. I mean, you're representing really food. Uh, you know, food is, uh, is a tough one. Uh, and uh, you know, as we were stepping into going live, uh, you know, you said is uh, that there have been, I don't know how many meals uh, in Calcutta, 30,000? 30,000 30, 30, 30, meals 000. in Calcutta. We've crossed more than 3 million meals uh, as per NRAI. So, you know, five, six cities of the National Restaurant Association of India. We've crossed 3 million meals in like, I think, 14 days that we are serving to people. We're also feeding dogs. So, yeah, I mean, we're trying to do our bit. Uh, you know, uh, our kitchens uh, are open to feed everyone. In our industry, we like to eat good food, so, you know, although times are tough times, Corona time, but we'll continue feeding. And then, Sagar, does it mean that the business has uh, gone through the roof? No, so I think the current times are tough times, you know, I mean, I mean, the new is uh, hashtag social distancing, hashtag contact less. And, you know, going forward for Abhishek, sir, and Pushpa, ma'am, the new will be rental waivers, no cam in treatment, etc., etc. <laughs> But yeah, you know, the current times are tough times. I think, uh, you know, adversity calls for, uh, you know, you have to adapt to newer, uh, 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 newer methods, procedures. You have to reinvent yourself, reinvent your business models. I think for us, the delivery business is the new now, you know, I mean, I mean, whatever we are selling is just delivery and contactless delivery, like I said, you know, and, and, and our industry is all about health, hygiene and happiness, right? And for us to be happy, we have to live today to survive tomorrow. Now that can only happen, uh, you know, provided the government steps in, uh, we, we get some kind of uh, benefits from the government, the banks need to come and support us. Like Abhishek sir said, you know, it's not a two-way process, it's a four-way process. And I completely agree with him, you know, I mean, the retailer and the mall developer cannot come together and solve this, it has to be a four-way process. But, you know, I mean, for us, uh, uh, for, uh, we will tell the retailers, tumi ho maata, tumi pita, tumi ho. <laughs> so, you know, I mean, I mean, for us, they are everything. If we have to sustain ourselves, we are at their mercy because, you know, there's going to be a lot of bloodbath in our industry. Times are really, really bad. You see many restaurants shutting down and even post the lockdown opening up, our business model is completely going to change, you know, and, and if, if our business model is going to change, the business model of aggregators, the business model of landlords all needs to change because it's like a, it's like a cycle, right? So it's going to lead to really tough times. You'll see many restaurants shutting down. You know, people will, you'll, you'll see a lot of social distancing happening within restaurants. You know, I mean, if you remember when the 2611 attack happened in, and, 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 and in India, you would have a metal detector outside every restaurant, outside every mall. Now you will have a lot of surveillance happening when it comes to health hygiene, you know, you'll have people with infrared thermometers, uh, you know, you have a lot of social distancing within the restaurant. A 80 cover restaurant will become a 40 cover restaurant. You have a lot of social distancing in the kitchen. You know, you have to have limited menus. Uh, you know, there'll be contactless ordering, contactless payments. I mean, someone might not also want to come and touch the door of a restaurant. You know, you might have to make it automated. I mean, servicing will have to go, you know, you have to use robotics or you have to do some kind of contactless kind of wow. service. Wow. It's going to be huge transformation, right? 
however you know i'm someone who is very very optimistic i completely agree with rakesh sir i think india uh, the kind the kind of people we are the kind of country that we are you know 80% of a population you know we are a population of 1.3 billion people 80% of a population live hand to mouth even someone like me has to work every day to pay my home emi right so you know we are going to bounce back really quick and fast because our standards of living have gone up our our our, our way of lifestyle has changed and we are not a country that's going to get boggled down with social distancing to that large extent however we are going to bounce back really quick and fast i think we are going to be resilient uh you know i i also completely agree with uh, whatever rajiv bajaj says that you know uh, the the economy has to you know be kicking has to be running you know i mean i mean see we have 2 and a half thousand million people who are your normal wage earners you know these are the guys who are your dishwashers your stewards your housekeeping guys they live hand to mouth on a daily basis right uh you cannot risk the life and livelihood of 2 and a half thousand million people for a few lakhs of people whom you don't even know you know saving them from a virus so the strong the the young the youth have to come down and run the economy those who are uh, senior citizens those who are vulnerable you know they need to stay at home take care of their health we need to you know we need to have more awareness happening i think the government has to take strict measures till now it's still a rich man's disease you know it cannot it should not become a poor man's disease the minute it becomes the poor man's disease it's widely spread between the slums etc it's going to go really bad so you know if we have to lock down uh, uh slums if we have to lock down locations or uh, rural areas might as well do that but let the economy let the youth of the country let the people who can run the economy in the rightful manner come ahead and do it because otherwise you know we are looking at a financial disaster we, i mean i mean this 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 is like an epidemic to the economy wow wow well said uh, have you represented it to the government as yet yes we have uh, on behalf of nri we have represented to the finance minister uh, the respective chapters has gone and represented to the respective chief ministers uh, we are hoping you know of keeping fingers crossed we are hoping for at least some good news coming in from somewhere but uh, you know i mean our industry uh, the hospitality the travel and tourism industry we are one of the largest employment creators you know and and, and i hate to say this Correct. i mean I, is the retail industry you know and i hate to say this that the retail industry the travel tourism industry we don't even have any industry status or representation i mean it's high time that our industry the retail industry gets this industry status the hospitality industry gets this industry status we require an industry minister representing us you know i mean i mean the kind of challenges that we face especially the kind of compliances that we have to go through i mean you might have read that article you know it's easier to buy a uh, a pistol then open a restaurant you know the kind of compliances that you have to go through to <laughs> set up a restaurant you know and and, and and on a lighter note you know i'm i'm quite sure that both abhishek sir and, and pushpa mama are foodies so they will look into our our, our case and they will ensure that <laughs> the restaurants are thriving in their malls and we are granted with those benefits that we so, got to get. so sagar i just uh, one one very quick one yeah, and yeah. you know it is true what you're saying is that uh, we also hearing that you know the food uh, restaurant uh is going to be really severely hit uh, you know also it has a lot of mom and pop kind of you know people who were who were uh doing it more as a hobby um and you know it was like uh, you know rich uh, fathers spoiled kid uh, you know who had got into fnb or you know a, a son in law or a daughter in law uh, that you wanted them to be gainfully occupied uh, so you know that had also really happened do you think that the space will get really consolidated i mean somebody said the 30 40% maybe even more fnb is going to uh, get out of business a lot of like i said a lot of blood bath you know there are a lot of restaurants that are going to get shut it's going to become more tight more consolidated a lot of unemployment you know a lot of unemployment uh, i think i think for the next one one and a half years we all have to relook into our increments into you know maybe not giving in bonuses see yeah, uh, i mean I, at I, our I, level i i all about those words stand for actually you. actually at our level you know we have uh, 345 stores uh, 2700 employees you know for someone like us a startup like us i mean our salary payouts are four four and a half crores a month you know i mean literally i get shivers when i think of you know april is gone what will happen in may and then what will happen in june so so you know i mean i mean by god's grace we are a funded company so we have some cash reserves but look at the guy who is not funded look at the guy who was looking growing uh well and looking at doing a capital raise and suddenly stopped you know there's no uh, equity infusion coming into our sector for for the next 6 to 9 months and and you don't know how things are going to shape up i mean till september things are going to be very very sluggish our only hope is you know when by the time diwali comes in and maybe hoping that you know christmas kicks in with some kind of good news but a lot of consolidation i think a lot of restaurants are going to shut down a lot of pubs are going to shut down you will see a lot of food court transformations happening like you rightly said you know someone's 
uh, rich dads, rich son. I mean, you know, nothing to do, opening up a pub, or you know, someone's wife owning a owning a subway or a, a subway franchise or something like that. I think all that is going to, uh, you know, the there will be no incremental wealth with people to be able to do that. You know, I mean, I mean, I mean, even if you look at malls, you know, today who are the guys who comes to malls? Uh, I mean, I mean, I mean, the rich and the affluent come and shop, but today for them, you know, safeguarding their lives is going to be more important. They can also go online and shop. Now it's the middle class that actually comes and spends in malls, right? But once they start getting salary uh, reductions, salary pay cuts, you know, will they have that surplus wealth to come and you know watch a movie as often as they did before, or will they have that surplus wealth to come and spend in restaurants, you know, have a good time in a pub, you know, have a Friday night out, have a Saturday night out? So I think we're looking at tough times. Uh, we all have to reinvent ourselves, reinvent our business models, and I think the ones that are going to consolidate the business, the ones that are going to be resilient, are going to hold fort. But you know there are some many good businesses whom I know uh, live on daily cash flows uh, in the food space. You know, I mean, I mean, I feel sad for them, but many of them have already shut operations and are not looking at coming back and bouncing back. So really tough yeah. times. One, one, one operational question uh, that has been asked, uh, Sagar, is that uh, which uh, type of packaging is best for virus to die faster in food? So I think I think food when served hot, when cooked at a particular temperature, you know, ensures that ensures that you know when you cook it at a particular temperature, ensures that you know you actually you know do not allow any kind of virus to come in. And obviously, you know, once it's 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 pre-packed in, in in any kind of food grade material, kind of an equipment, I mean, a kind of kind of a packaging, um, no. completely sealed. You know, it ensures that there are no leakages. And then you you know you you what we are doing is uh, you know we are going one one step ahead. We are also mentioning the temperature of the guy preparing the order for you. So when the consumer has full transparency, you know, he exactly knows the guy preparing the order. What is his body temperature? And at the same time, you know, we are trying to make this entire delivery process contactless. You know, if a, so we do a lot of our deliveries to Swag, uh, Swiggy and Zomato. So, you know, out of our 345 stores, around 100 stores are operational on delivery. And, and when these riders come in, you know, we literally check the temperature. We ensure that they're wearing a mask. And if they're not wearing a mask, we rightly tell them a no. And I want to just highlight one more thing that we've just done. Uh, uh, it's, again, a new business line, a new business model for us. It's, a, it's an innovation for us. Yesterday, we went live with Baumoma Essentials. You know, because uh, today when you order in a big basket or a grofers, it takes you a two-day lean period wait time, right? However, we are serving food from 11 a.m. to 11 p.m. Uh, on real time. In 45 minutes, your food is delivered to you, right? If you go to a supermarket like a Big Bazaar, like a Spencer's, which is obviously they're doing a phenomenal job by being open from 10 to 5. But, you know, it, it at times tends to get crowded, right? So you're not really getting social distancing. So we've just, just got into e-commerce of grocery and essentials since yesterday. And uh, we're seeing good traction, you know, because... Real time, you can order eggs. Real time, you can order breads. Real time, you can order milk. So, like you know, for someone like us to make better utilization of our resources, better utilization of manpower, better utilization of the fleet that we have with Swiggy and Zomato, we have reinvented our business model and you know come up with a new line of business. So that's how you'll have to adapt. You'll have to do newer things. You might fail. You might you'll have to learn from those failures and bounce back again. So that's what that the is pretty, is going to be. pretty tangential, huh? I mean, uh, wow, Momos, you, you you're doing deliveries of grocery. Yeah, delivery of essential services. So we are calling it Wow Momo Essentials. We started in four cities, which is Calcutta, Delhi, NCR, Bangalore, and Chennai. And let's see how it goes. Interesting. Fingers crossed. Thanks. Nice. Interesting. Uh, Mukesh, uh, I'm going to come to some uh, sort of micro questions uh, in terms of, assume we open. We open May or June. Now that we've opened, you got the permission to open the mall as well. So what's the next day that's going to happen? First of all, we have been talking about too many curves. U curve, L curve, W curve. But I think the most important curve today is the learning curve. There's so much learning that has given us in the last 30 days' time. It's amazing. You know, who would have thought that malls start working on a plan to reduce the footfall? Yes. Yes. We always yes. talk about increasing the footfall. But we have come to the situation that you have to start working, reducing the footfall, reducing uh, the dwell time in the mall. I mean, it's all these things are some new things that we're learning. That's where the, the thing goes. And let me come back to uh, the issue of uh, bouncing back of the mall. What when the business becomes uh, normal? Everybody is expecting mm -hmm. this to happen uh, sooner than later. If you look at the, in the macro picture first, if the economy of the country has to become normal, the most important thing is the public transport. If the public transport becomes normal, that means you're expecting people to travel. Once it's traveling, that means uh, anyway, you're meeting people, you're touching people in the public transport, there's a metro or a bus or Ola or Uber or, uh, or local train. That means you're meeting and anyway, you are in close distance. 
If that happens, that means the fear which people have will slowly start going. What is the fear which is, you know, that's basically in everybody's mind. People are fearful. What happens in case I go out? What will I get contact, get the virus? But once that goes, I think this life is going to get a little more normal. And I think as, as a country, as, as people here, I think we have a little bit, I mean, it's a little more stronger. We are a little more resilient. We want, we know how to bounce back. And I leave the decision to the government that, you know, when in their judgment that when we are ready to really start operating. As far as uh, operating malls are concerned, we are working with SOPs. A lot of malls have their own SOP. We are also working with SOP. I think we may end up having common SOP for the entire industry. Where we are going to restrict the number of people. We are talking about having, a, a, let's say, a million square feet uh, mall will not have more than 15,000 people at any given time. people at any given time. So we're trying to reduce the number of uh, people coming to the mall. We are talking about reducing the, the food court tables. We're talking about reducing the number of tables in the restaurant itself. We're talking about reducing the number of people coming to the retail stores. Uh, talking about uh, in, in the left, can we restrict the number of people rather than having six people in the left, can you have only two people in the left or three people in the left. When you enter the mall, you'll have SOPs like sanitizers and chambers in case the government permits that. Now we have a scanner where we sanitize all the bags. So we are working all the solutions so that the people feel safe. It's very important that uh, when you start the mall, people will start feeling safe because if you do not do that and if you lose that confidence once, to get them back is very, very difficult. It's not only the public, the, the, the consumer, even the government is going to crack on this. So we have been very safe on this. We are hoping that uh, we are going to follow that. Consumers are Already, as you see today, also when people come to uh, the food and big brother, I think they have patience now. They wait outside, they stand in the queue. They they are told that you spend only half an hour, 40 minutes. They spend only half, 40 minutes. They come back. I think people are going to be a little more disciplined. That's going to be, that's a new learning. I think consumer behavior is going to change. May not be in terms of buying patterns. Because I've also been hearing about, uh, you know, that uh, brand loyalty will go. I, I have my doubts. Uh, uh, but again, as I said, in the, some category, you may have, uh, flourish, some category may go on a bit. But my sense is that maybe in our next, once the government gives us a go, may take a month or two to, for things to get back to normal. Got it, got it. Uh, Pushpa and Abhishek, uh, just a quick one. Um, you know, in terms of uh, the, uh, the, the malls uh, that we're going to be having, do you think that there are going to be certain categories that are going to do better than the others, Pushpa, you touched upon the strength of the brand. Yes. Uh, and, you know, that was very nice. I didn't think through that, but, you know, it's a very good point, uh, the way that you articulated. Uh, my question is more about the category now. Uh, yeah. So, uh, certainly, I think, you know, uh, restaurants, especially bars, are going to be impacted because social distancing is the last thing that they usually practice. And hence, that would come in, you know, and get impacted. And it would be, uh, along with cinemas, there would be an impact on those two uh, categories. And cinemas also, when I talk to the operators, they're talking about social distancing, uh, you know, leave two seats between every booking block, maybe leave a row, which just means that the occupancy will go down that much more. As it is, cinema occupancy is 35%. That could go down even further. So till the time that the virus vaccine is not found, two, three categories which used to thrive on very high dense population, mm -hmm. those categories will have an impact. Now, if I talk about uh, normal food and beverage, you know, those and QSRs, if I go by the learning of what's happening in the other countries, those are bouncing back a little quickly. However, the rider in this is the ones which are bouncing back are the ones which have very clear hygiene standards and transparent communication of those hygiene standards. So those brands are bouncing back quicker. Uh, and and uh, one bad PR episode, like the way we had in terms of last week, the, you know, the delivery episode, uh, well, it can impact an entire category. So hmm. as this becomes one of those situations where everyone in the non-bar space will have to come up with social distancing norms in such a way that you know, there's a bad episode that occurs within the property. I think that becomes the collaboration that needs to go through. But if you look at fashion now, fashion, I believe that kind of fashion will gain more traction if it is sustainable in nature, if it's talking the language of uh, more technology-based fashion, uh, if it's talking language which is really more about uh, social capital. If the 
buyer is finding that that brand is more empathetic and is understanding social capital, those brands will find much more attraction, especially among the youth. And I do agree with Tushar that it would be the millennials and plus plus uh, who would come in first, um, you know, as the malls open. Uh, one wouldn't expect the senior citizens to come outside their homes for a while now. It would be the younger lot. And the younger lots in the millennial thinking will certainly reflect in the malls now or in the organized retailing now. And I think it's also important to understand that, uh, you know, apart from pure fast fashion, people will start looking at much more made, what is the source of the country? If you look at <laughs> where is it sourced from, will become and one of the situations that people will be a little wary about till the vaccine. And yes, there would, those decisions would be emotional in nature. So I believe that, you know, when I look at it, nationalism will take a rise. So made in India brands will get a positive uh, impetus in this whole uh, episode of uh, COVID. For a good one year, I believe made in India brands will actually stand to do well over the others. Uh, and, and that seems to be the trend. I think this f and and entertainment, this will take a hit initially, but after some time, it's going to really bounce back very, very strongly because people are starved with entertainment and the movies. Today, you know, people are really tired of sitting at home. Once the movie starts, maybe two months, three months from now, I think it's going to, going to really going to bounce back very, very strongly and same with f and also. Today, you know, see, people are used to eating out, you know, ordering, people are today very young, ordering even home, uh, uh, getting food at home, but once it starts operating, people start feeling safe. I think they is going to really bounce up very, very strongly. So for them, it's I going agree. to be a that is going to be very, very fast. I agree. It may take also, some time, but uh, have... one, one point in this is that in China, the cinemas opened and shut. They didn't yeah. shut because of social distancing. They shut because there was a lack of yeah, content. Yeah, yeah. The yeah. content will become a, an issue, and that's why I think it will take a little bit more time. And by Diwali, they will create more content. And same is the case with most of the bars. But one point I'd like to make here is that um, if you look at it, like Abhishek was saying, over a period of two years, you will see that certain brands would have gained in geometric progressions and certain others, unfortunately, would have had a fallout. Uh, that would seem to be the reality uh, when, when one looks at what's going to happen. Yeah. Uh, Abhishek, I'm not the same question, a little different now, uh, given yeah. that uh, Pushpa has uh, elaborately articulated. You know, one of the things that we're understanding is that the common areas in malls, you know, which used to be really happening where there was a lot of things and would attract a lot of the people away from e-commerce into coming into the physical space, uh, may now be cordoned off, uh, you know, because of uh, the social distancing and, uh, and obviously the virus. Uh, how do you then differentiate you know, the physical space from the e-commerce, um, you know, when really what you're going to be servicing me in the mall is exactly what I'm going to get on the e-commerce platform. Uh, see, the experience you cannot compare what you, com what you buy on an e-commerce platform versus how you buy in a shopping center can never be the same. And because of that difference in the experience, the, uh, the consumer will come into the shopping center. I mean, if I have to buy an Adidas t-shirt, it takes me 10 minutes to buy an Adidas t-shirt on an e-commerce platform. Correct. But I don't want to do that because when I go out to buy my t-shirt, I'm going out for the experience and not just the t-shirt. So, and that is the real difference. Now, on the point that throughout, malls have always tried to attract more and more footfall. And now suddenly the business model is changing. We are saying we want less people in the mall, which is completely, you know, contradictory to <laughs> how we designed the mall, how we yes. plan to run the mall, this and that. Now, we, so two major points here. Uh, one, India has never dependent, India was never dependent on consumption from outside. India was always dependent from shopping centers to be consuming from their community. Now that part, we are very, very safe. So the consumer is there. We are not waiting for people to travel from some other country and then buy. Second, we all know that 50% of the footfall in the mall is anyways wo ghumne wala janta. So now what we are that trying to say is... That is not going to come. Haan, so 50% we have to take us, which is our buyer, and we have to give security, give them a sanitized environment, hai, so that they can shop. Wonderful. So, 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 
one we try and get only those people who are actually your buyers by giving them the safety environment and giving them the feeling that this is a sanitized place one of the thoughts that also came to us was that why not have a 100 rupee cover charge for people to enter in the mall right. so you 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 do that 100 rupee and only then you enter. so you know just ideas i'm not saying this is what is implementable Got but it. this is one yes. of the ideas that you know if you want your serious consumer to come in an environment where he feels safe then you know you have to think of all these things wonderful my last set of question uh, to uh, i'll start with tushar and then jamshed and then uh, rakesh ji to you uh, we've got uh, just 5 minutes left before i uh, give it back to ashna uh, tushar i are you going to be looking at expansion very good question i know i know <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah. it's like the rent question for the developers <laughs> yes <laughs> so so let me let me assure one thing to the landlords and sagar you said it very rightly aap hi mai baap ho there's only lord lord and landlord the english dictionary there's no third lord my my thing is we were planning to bring one very big brand this year which we have delayed and we'll be bringing it next year but that will only happen in the second quarter second or third got it. understood so new brands but i can tell you one thing that there will be no capex from any of the retailers there will only be capex for the things that were committed or that we are we have stores which are 70% complete so we will do that so even if the landlord is thinking i will let this guy go you are not going to get a new guy which is what my next question was going to be you are not going to find another retailer to take that space i have got calls from five brands saying tushar would you like to buy us out they say we don't have the money to pay the rent wow so, would you like to five brands and two of them are decent brands and we said nothing now let's wait 3 6 months and let's look at it we are looking at another big brand before 3 months to buy out in india that also the same thing we said let's wait let 3 6 months go we'll get a better picture the landlord will also have to look if there is a reduction going to be in the footfall if there is a timing limit 12 to 8 right you'll have less people coming in the salary is uh, the rent will have to be adjusted based on yeah. i so, hope the bank uh, was listening to this uh, abhishek and pushpa and mukesh would be very happy <laughs> uh, when that is uh... it's a fact if you are going to tell me the mall is going to operate 12 to 8 and is operating from 10 to 10 there is a less time less footfall coming in the mall the you will have to be realistic and i want to tell you one thing it is abhishek said very rightly end of the day the government will do what they have to do or might not do we don't know i can't rely on the government doing something saying only they will do bankers we also push as much as we can hmm. but everybody here will have to hold each other's hand or somebody will fall and everybody will fall if there are no retailers in the mall the mall is not going to work if there is no mall the retailers won't so that's it it has to be a fair bit and you'll have to sit across and you'll have to compromise from the retailer side and from the landlord side got it. understood absolutely i think very nicely put up collaboration jamshed uh, what is the reason for shopping i mean in an environment like this is there a reason for shopping yeah i'll tell you <coughs> uh talking about uh, benefit of sitting online versus offline and now you can do this online so that was true mm-hmm. even before covid so there is the there 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 are people who who prefer one kind of shopping behavior and there are people who prefer another kind of shopping behavior but e-commerce is a lot more safer today no, um, i understand i understand so the question is uh what is safer Hmm. and if uh, brands can demonstrate that level of safety which a consumer is looking for i think that's the barrier to cross it's not whether it's it's not necessarily e-commerce may be perceived as safer but it is not necessarily safer because uh, the product is coming and being handled by various companies uh, there is no assurance see the guy who is giving the last mile delivery he could be on contract he could be a third party which has been brought on board as opposed to if i walk into a shop let's say if i walk into fpb i know that there's a big organization backing it up and if fpb says that we sterilize uh, our premise every 15 minutes or half an hour i believe it 
the contract guy says that look oh we do all these checks i may not believe it so i'm not i'm not saying this is a channel play i'm saying this is a brand play the trust level in the brand is what will determine whether a customer will gravitate uh, or not See, today for example food retail is the most risky form of retail today because there are so many people still going to the stores and buy but they are buying from the big players because they are trusting the fact very true is and you know this is fingers crossed but uh, we've not had a single case in our store not our stores meaning any most food retail stores because you know there is some intensity of uh, preparation being being done so i feel that uh, customers will uh, will want to shop the way they want to shop but the threshold for them to select a brand mm-hmm. or select an outlet will in fact change and you know Uh, it's a matter of uh, perception you know we just made a comment that only serious buyers will come to malls in india it will not be the case in fact you're going to find a lot of people coming to malls because for them that's a safer environment than they where they are living you understand what i mean so it's a question of which segment of the market you're talking about in fact the mall is going to get overcrowded and serious buyers are going to stay away if you if you find that people for them it's a break i mean for them that's a sanitized environment so it is that which people will look for as to where will i feel secure as opposed to you know that that is my my take on this subject very nice to see the you know very refreshing uh, and a different uh, thought uh, rakesh ji final question to you um, before i give it to ashna i, I think there's some 108 uh, unanswered questions uh, you know maybe ashna can send it uh, to you on the emails uh, if uh, rakesh ji we were talking 18 months from today and we were doing future gazing um what would you say will be the three four things on the other side uh, that we are going to be seeing so 18 months from today you know we're sitting in say september 2021 um uh, what are we going to be seeing at that time with the fact that you know what we're going to see is the optimism that existed in some sorry rakesh ji your voice is cracking a little bit hoping the fact that the optimism would be similar to september 2018 not even 19 right so not optimism but in 2018 when things are looking quite rosy and you know india was going to go forward investments were going to be on track i think i let's not uh, you know it's not a doomsday uh, life is going to be there uh, the people are going to be there business is going to be there families are going to be there situation is going to be there and uh, we will overcome this uh, challenge that we have uh, and trust uh, all the people all the scientists researchers etc who are working on it today uh, the health workers who are working uh, right now uh, i am sure we will find a solution and get back to normal Let's not try and guess so much ahead. I think we have a fantastically young population in this country. We have some amazing set of entrepreneurs, and I, I think that together uh, with the other stakeholders, like Abhishek mentioned very well, that it's not about just the malls and the retailers to do the things together. It's also about getting the others. And I completely echo that with you. you know, I think we have to all work together uh, because if retail survives, the entire value chain survives. It's a long value chain. It's not going to be a barrel value chain. It's a food value chain. It's the F&B value chain. It's the cinema value chain. You know, imagine, you know, if cinema complexes don't survive, you know, you know we won't have a next Amitabh Bachchan movie. Uh, that's worrying. Right? So we definitely need to see Amitabh Bachchan in a few more movies. Uh, yeah. It's very, very important. Yeah. Sorry, uh, Rakesh, your voice wasn't clear, but I'll just summarize what you said. Uh, uh, you said is that uh, you know. there is going to be positivity there is going to be optimism it's not a doomsday there will be celebrations we will overcome uh, this uh, and we have to go through it collectively uh, i think uh, i you know all the panelists have said that you know there are going to be collaboration uh, abhishek you you said there are four stakeholders other than the customer i think is that is what is going to be required uh, from each one of us to be able to collaborate uh, together with that uh, ashna i'm going to pass it back to you and uh you can you can take it forward and close go ahead yeah thank you so much sorry ashna uh 
we we can't uh, we can't hear you hi now do you want to uh, switch off your video and then uh, come on the audio side magad dayani hi ashna can you switch off your video because we can't hear you hello this is sharvid ajus left ecom okay sure hello uh, sorry uh, if you just switch off the video uh, ashna yeah please go ahead go ahead ashna okay so i i mean i i'll, I'll thank on behalf of uh, mapic uh, i know how how busy you guys are uh, you know there is a uh, there is a day job for all of us uh, i've heard from number of people uh, that they become more busy uh, you know in in these times uh, i know you're you know very senior in your respective organizations uh, and you know, there will be a lot of uh, pressing things to do thank you very much uh, for you know spending uh, over an hour uh hear this uh, this afternoon and uh, you know be safe uh, appreciate your you know comments and thought processes very refreshing very new uh, so thank you very much and thank you thank to you, all the yeah thank you thank you everyone thank, thank you thank you thank you everybody thank you everybody thank you uh, thank you bye bye okay yes so i think uh, there was a sagar Yeah, some delivery in Bombay also. Yeah, uh -huh. we will very soon. So starting off with uh, with four cities, and hopefully Bombay should happen soon. Lovely, lovely. Fantastic. Thank you. All the best. Very thank nice. you. Thank you, sir. Thank nice you. meeting you. <laughs> nice catching up. Thank you, Anucham. Thank you, sir. Bye. Take care. Bye. Thank you, panelists. Thank you so much. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you very much. So great. Thank you, speakers, uh, for sharing your thoughts. So we are so glad that uh, uh, we. It's very. Uh, overwhelming to